Hi, it's Professor Murray. Today I want to talk about timers and I'm going to start with some real basic stuff and then move into a little bit more advanced. I'm using Studio 5000 right now, but this is pretty much the same for any uh, PLC programming language. So I'm going to be doing this in ladder logic. And the first thing you have to do when you're using a timer with most languages anyway, is you have to create a timer tag. So I'm going to go over here to my edit tags and go down to the bottom. And I'm going to call it, I'll just call it uh, timer one. And the data type, the default in this program is dint, but my data type is timer. So I start typing timer and there it is. Now I have my timer tag. Let's go over here to my ladder logic and I'll put in a couple rungs. And what I want to do is I want to turn a light on with my timer. So first thing I'm going to do is grab an output and I think I have one called system ready. So I'm, I'm just going to type system ready. Oops. There's my output for my system ready light that I want to turn on. And I'm going to have to turn that on with something, so I'll put my input there. All right, now I need to put a timer command in. So I'll go over here to timers. And I'm going to use a timer on. And that timer is going to be my, I'll hook it to my time one tag. And it's asking me for a preset. Before I get into that, let's go look at my timer tag. Over here, I'm going to expand it. And every timer has minimum five components. Some, some more advanced languages have more uh, features in their timers, but they always have these five at minimum. So first one here I have is my pre, that's my preset. So that's how long I want the timer to run for. The second one, the ACC, that's my accumulated time. And that's the timer tracking how long it's run. The third is an enable. And this is called different things in different languages, but basically it's what causes your timer to run. Now I need to start my timer with something. And over here, if I put, go to my favorites, if I put a normally open contact or examine if closed, then I have to cause something to happen to start this timer. I have to turn a switch or push a button or some output somewhere has to be hot. And so in this case, I don't have anything else going on. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the timer to start itself. And I don't want to normally open it. I want to normally close. And what I'll do is I'll use my timer one. And I'm going to use the done bit. There it is. So what this means is when the timer is not finished, timing, it's going to enable itself and it's going to start uh, start timing. And then when it finishes, its done bit will go hot and that will cause this signal to not be hot because it's normally closed. And that will very quickly, almost instantly disable the timer. And then on the next scan, it's going to see that it's disabled because that done bit's no longer hot and it's going to start again. So this will keep my timer running constantly. Now down here, I need to do something to turn this system ready light on. Now, if I use my timer timing, then it's going to essentially always be on because the timer resets so quickly 
that you don't really see it go off and then back on again. So that's not going to work. And if I use my done bit, then you're still not going to see it. It's always going to appear to be off because the done bit just flashes for one scan of the, of the ladder logic and you won't see it. Neither one of those are going to work. So what I need to do is I need to look at this accumulated value and make a decision. Uh, first, I need my preset in there. I'm going to put 2000. And this particular timer uses milliseconds. So 2000 actually equals two seconds. Then over here, I'm going to compare. So I'll go over my compare commands and I'll just use a less than. And let's get rid of this input. So source A, that's my timer one accumulated value. And source B, I'm going to put 1,000. So what that means is when my accumulated value is 1,000 or less, or one second or less, uh, this should go hot, and otherwise it should go cold. Let's go online and see what it's doing. We're online, and my timer is running. You can see it approaching the 2,000 mark, or two seconds, and then it resets itself. You can't see the done bit going hot because it's too quick, and you can't see this guy going cold because it, it all happens in one scan. So even though you can't see it, you know what's going on because you can see the accumulated increasing and then reset to zero. And also you can see my system ready light is flashing off and on. And that's what I wanted it to do. So that's the first way to just use one timer to start uh, making something flash on and off or, or do something for a period of time. You set the timer with a preset of the entire cycle, and then you use a compare command, such as the less than command, to take a piece of that cycle to do something with. Okay, so that's the first step to timers. Thanks.